Do you think smaller games are worth $70? That has been the big question when it comes to AstroBot releasing. Should smaller games cost a certain amount? What dictates that premium $70 price tag? Is it the length that the game takes you to beat? Is it the giant open worlds? Is it all those little side quests? Does a game that is technically 100 hours, but maybe only 10 hours of it being good, considered to be good as $70? Or a game like, say, AstroBot, for example, where it is $60, but the entire 20 hours it takes to complete the game is pure, amazing gaming. Just moment to moment. That is the discussion I want to have here with you guys right now. For those of you in the chat, and of course, joined by our own coworker, Little Bobby here, I want to have the discussion because the moment this was posed online and people were talking about it in chat and people were retweeting it and everything, there were a lot of comments. And I feel like this is a very important discussion to have because based on the way the gaming industry is going right now, it could probably go this way and people are going to say they're not for it but and honestly i'm kind of for it i'm going to get into that in just a second here so but if you enjoy these types of discussions and make sure you join us live on the channel if you ever want to be here live with us or again comment down below on this particular video and uh let us know your personal thoughts with that being said though i'm Tom with direct gaming hit that subscribe button if you haven't already we're getting close to our goal of 10,000 subs by the end of the year and let's go ahead and get started with this so my personal opinion when it comes to this right now is that if a game is 60 or 70 dollars and i know that can be a lot for people i'm not saying that you have that if you can't afford a game at 60 or 70 dollars that you should not be gaming or anything like that that is absolutely stupid or anything like that right Just get that get that out of here but if a game is 60 to 70 dollars but it is on the shorter side so let's you know one of the big examples a lot of people like to talk about from last year was spider-man 2 spider-man 2 if completing the main game was only about 15 to 18 hours if you wanted to platinum the game as 25 28 maybe at the very most right and so a lot of people are saying this was not worth 70 dollars right a game now like astrobot has come out that is you know realistically if you just go through the story and everything you do a couple of the side little galaxy areas i'm gonna say 10 hours at most to complete the game obviously you can go back you can do side content you can do all the challenge areas and everything like that which by the way this game is getting free content later down the line with more challenges and everything so that's all cool but the question is is that worth $70? And I think when you hear the thing of, oh, the game's not big enough, or it needs to be this amount of hours for the story itself, it's like, okay, is that a one and done playthrough? And, that, and that's what you consider a good 70 hours? Or are you somebody who likes to go back and play the game again? Or for example, like God of War Ragnarok, I, will, I went through that original game, played through it, beat it, and I came back like four to five months later and I played through it again on New Game Plus and everything because I wanted to do that, you know, or a game like Horizon or a game like a GTA or any big open world game. Is that the only time that you would say $70 is worth it or is it worth that because it's bloated big open world areas or anything like that, regardless if you like the stories or anything, right? There, there's th this topic is a lot more complex than just simply, oh, uh, X reviewer said that this game will take me 10 hours to beat, not worth the price. Or X and Y developer said, hey, this is gonna cost, this is gonna take you around 30 to 40 hours. Okay, that's worth it. There are so many things when it comes to this particular discussion that are like, okay, pump the brakes for a second. We need to back it up here. When I look at a game, again, I'm gonna use an AstroBot a lot here for this example, but when I look at a game like AstroBot, right? It is, yes, generally I'd say around 10 hours or so, give or take, to beat just the game itself. There's obviously some side stuff. There are hidden bots and things to find. Challenge galaxies, the whole nine yards, right? And I'd say to platinum it for an average person would probably take you, I don't know, maybe 40 hours at that, maybe, depending on how good you are. Obviously, different people have different skill levels, and I understand that completely 100%. So, but when it came to the moment to moment gameplay, everyone always talks about that gameplay loop, right? Like you get like 30 to 40 seconds to really capture somebody with the gameplay. And if that can repeat over and over and over again, when it comes to the game that you are playing and next thing you know, 10 hours has gone by and you're like, I want to play more of this. Isn't that technically worth it to you? You, it, 
kept your attention going the entire time. There are other games that might be like, okay, it's going to take me four to five hours to get into it. You know, you see people defend games where it's like, oh, no, 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 get past the 20 hours mark or something like that. Then the game gets good. Is that technically worth $70, even if it's that taking you that long to do it? I don't personally think so. I would look at that and go, no, this was absolutely not worth it or anything like that, right? And, you know, even simple things, whether it is considered New Game Plus or doing side content or just starting the game over again, right? Because one thing that I always like to do when it comes to games, especially once I got into my 20s and everything, is I would buy a game, I would play through it, and then I would come back later on. And then maybe down the line again, I would play it again. I've gone through God of War Ragnarok now three times, and it's only been out for a few years. I've gone through the Uncharted games multiple times, right? Because those are mainly single player games. Mario games. Oh, Mario games. I will jump into once a year. No question. And just play through an entire game. Absolutely love it. Mario Mario Wonder is one of my top games of last year of 2023. And those I will easily pay 60 to 70 dollars for those games i will because those are worth it to me right now i am in a lucky situation where i can usually for the most part afford one or two games a month but there are definitely other months where i cannot afford to buy more than one game or maybe i can buy two sale games that's about it and everyone's going to have their different you know i would say levels of you know fi finances where you can either buy a bunch of games or you can only buy one right why do you think things like the steam sale are so important or wait until you see those sales on the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store where a lot of those games will go on sale for like over half off. That's your chance right there to get a bunch of good games right there. So it's it's one of those discussions, I think, where no matter what, it is not as simple as, oh, game is only X amount of hours long, it's worth it, or it's not worth it. It is never that simple. And I feel like the people who potentially say something like that are kind of missing the points. Because when you get a special game, again, like Astrobot, like we have right here, this game is just pure video. It's pure video game. That's all it is. I won't even say a cheesy line like it's pure video game magic or something like that, which technically it is. But it is just pure video games. It's a platformer celebrating 30 years of all these different characters and games that have come out over the years. Heck, let's jump back to a classic that everyone knows. Mario. Look at Mario Wonder, Mario Odyssey, all the Mario games. Look at Smash Brothers, for crying out loud. We haven't had a Smash Brothers game in years, and we probably won't for a while because of Ultimate and everything. That thing is literally a beat-em-up celebration of video games itself. I'd pay $70 for that if it was coming out right now. But again, it always comes down to just simply a lot of different factors. What kind of financial position are you in? Is it a game that you even think you're going to like, right? Like, for example... A game that a lot of people will like and say like oh it's got hundreds of hours and everything is something like starfield right or oblivion or anything like that i've just never really enjoyed uh bethesda games like that i've never been to that kind of bethesda rpg not to mention the whole jank and the crazy you know bugs and everything that are in it that's just never been personally for me and that's fine i'm not going to come out and be and judge every single person and be like wow you paid 70 dollars for that mush of a game no thanks that, that's just not the way it is right so I think when people say like, you know, is this isn't worth it or it is worth it. Okay, it's not worth it to you, but it could be worth it to somebody else. And you know what? And I might get some flack from this. I even think something like if you take a $40 price point or a $30 price point and you put it onto a live service game like Concord, Concord had a lot of issues. It had a lot of issues in terms of the character designs, how bland parts of it were and everything like that. But if it had that stuff fixed and it came out for that price, guess what? If people saw that, it would have sold well because I loved the idea of only paying once and not having to do the free to play battle pass multiplayer BS stuff. Just saying it right now. I think I think that kind of goes drops off. Obviously, I understand the problems that Concord had. I had it. We've talked about it in other videos and live streams and everything like that. But again, it always comes down to what is best for you. Uh, Bobby, I want to get your personal thoughts right now. What, do you think shorter games that are around 10 to 15 hours, and you know, let's just say 15 to 20 hours, are those worth it? Um, or does a game need to be this open world 100 hour plus bloaty game to be considered good for that $70 price point? What are your personal thoughts? Uh, it's it's a lot like you said, it's very subjective. Um, we have to be realistic and we want good games. So prices are going to go up. 
that's that's the biggest thing a lot of people threw a fit over going from 60 to 70 and um I get it because it, you know times is tough as they say, but at the same time, like the developers got to eat, you know. And I know a lot of the profits and all that stuff is going to like higher ups, and that's something that needs to be dealt with completely separately. Like we don't need to be giving trash humans like Bobby Kotick, you know, 180 million dollars to leave. Like that's stupid. But at the same time, we we absolutely need to make sure that like the the, the boots on the ground developers are able to eat too. And so if prices have to go up to make sure they can have what they need and we can get better games out of it, I'm okay with that. That's the first thing I want to say about like price, stuff like that. And again, it's subjective, right? Like some people will go like, I will never, 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 never pay $70 for a game. And there are people who don't. And it's like you said, Steam sales, PlayStation has their sales like once a quarter. Yeah. Where it's like the, you know, up to 70% off this. And you'll find like the newer ish games that are like five months old, they'll be 20% off. Yep. So you can buy like Black Myth Wukong then and spend 50 instead of seven, right? With all of the things, it's really like Talon said, it's, it, is it worth it to you, right? For me, uh, I buy a lot of games that people fucking hate. You know, I spend a hundred dollars a year on Destiny. I played Avengers. I played the shit out of Avengers. I played a couple hundred hours of Avengers. I played a couple hundred hours of Anthem. Now Anthem I got for five bucks. I will never complain about Anthem. Never. Because I got it for five dollars. Avengers I think I got for like twenty? I'm not gonna complain about that either. You got a couple hundred hours. I thought it was fun. Yeah, I could have used a lot of work. I was hoping they would actually see it through a little longer. But you know, twenty. That the twenty was worth it for me. Astrobot, I just dropped the sixty on it to get the physical. It was fourteen hours of joy, of just bliss, of playing a fun ass game that yep. just the entire time I had a smile on my face. It's so good that I did a platinum. And like, I want my brother to play through it. But once he's done, I'm probably gonna go 100% another save file. And it's like Talon said, like, I'm one of those people too, who, you know, I, like Last of Us 2, I go back to that game twice a year. I've played through that game like eight or nine times in four years. I've had you know? I've had um, games, you know, um, whether it's my, my PlayStation because of like the four and everything or things on my Switch that have been out for seven plus years now. And if I'm still playing them in some regard to this day, I think that's worth it. I mean, 60 bucks over seven years. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know how many separate accounts I have on my Switch? Oh, yeah. I've got like, just like, I've got like Bobby 2, Bobby yep. 3, Bobby 4, just because I, I want to play Breath of the Wild again. And I think one of the biggest <laughs> things that a lot of people don't do, I'm not saying everybody, but I think there's a lot of people who they simply listen to online comments about how a game that they've probably never played, especially if early reviews are out and they're only basing it on the trailer. And I think what people really need to start doing, especially if something like 60 or $70 is a lot for you, which to a lot of us, it is. There are definitely games I've skipped over because of a, the price point B being busy and all that stuff, but do your own research. Do it. Watch yep. a trailer again if you need to. Watch multiple reviews. Don't just watch one review. Go in watching the gameplay. How does it look? Does it look fun? Have you played games that look like that before? Right? Um, all that stuff. You know, there, there are times where people are like, hey, I only play this one particular type of game, and this game that you're watching this video or listening to a review or reading or whatever is completely different in another ballpark. Will I like it? That's hard to say. If you've never played a game like that, there's a good chance you might not like it. It could surprise you and you do like it and it finally gets you out of that one game area right there and you finally get to explore different avenues of gaming and everything like that, right? Whether it is something that's more action heavy or it's a first person shooter or it's a puzzle game or a platformer or anything. There are that's why the that's why gaming is so special to a lot of people, because there are tons of different games that you can play all over in different genres and everything. But I think again, people you need to do your research, right? I I was guilty of this when I was a kid, right? I'd listen to your typical one IGN review or this is gonna age me a bit, game trailers review and yeah. that was it and then i based it off of that essentially but the older i got into like you know high school and everything i started to do my own research 
you know, whether it was Googling something or watching multiple reviews or back then reading more reviews and everything like that. And then if there was a, especially if there's a demo out, right? I would always look for demos if possible, which I know are not always there, but that there are demos, try it out yourself, right? Or if you have a friend who plays the game or got the game, go over, see if you can go over and just try it out for like half an hour if possible. I did that all the time with my friends back in high school, right? Or I would buy the game and they came over and be like, hey, I want to try I want to try this game out because I'm, I'm thinking of maybe buying it. Okay, sure. Here's the controller. Go for it, right? Um, and there will obviously be certain games that no matter what, you're going to pick up regardless, right? For me, it's going to be when Metroid Prime 4 comes out. That is a day one for me, no problem. And that, that's just how it is. Astrobot was another one. God of War, right? All those good games and everything like that. There are easily games that I do want to play, but I'm like, okay, either I have too much to play right now or in more, more, more realistically, I just don't have the funds for it right now. So I need to either wait for a sale or I need to just wait a few months to save up some money and then I can go buy it essentially. So yeah, the biggest thing I can always say is never take one person's word only or random comments in a video slash on Twitter, right? Do your own research, research everything. If your research then yields those same results for reasons A, B, C, and D, then okay, don't buy it. But that You did your research and you said, nah, I'm good for right now. It's like, okay, that's fine. But don't just judge it off of one thing that you've heard or some random, you know, again, I use Twitter as a thing because honestly, you should never take Twitter comments uh that's serious it's because of the you know what it is essentially so yeah um you know just 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 always do that thing um and one thing i do want to pull from our comments by the way shout out to fuji here over on youtube which by the way if you want to join us live always come by uh he says new game plus difficulty uh specific changes uh multiple ways to play alternate endings these are all highly effective ways to build a game ability for it to be replayed and you are correct you know it's not it can't be applied to every single game but yeah, there are tons of games that do that, right? New Game Plus is added to a lot of things, right? Um, and by the way, for anyone saying that New Game Plus should be their day one, it's not always that simple because otherwise balance gets thrown out the the you know, the window essentially. Um, but yeah, you are right. Having things like a New Game Plus, different challenges and everything that you can try out and all that kind of fun stuff. Uh, one game that I personally loved was the God of War Ragnarok New Game Plus because then I, after I beat it, I then did it. I went and did all the Valkyrie challenges and everything not required but i want to put my skills to the test and everything like that or a much simpler game mario games i go and seek out all those secret worlds and everything when it comes to mario all the secret levels and all that stuff i'm doing it now in astrobot so you know that's just you know the way it is sometimes with that so i definitely do agree with that statement yes um uh, but it, i don't think it's necessarily required for every single itty bitty game for certain games it absolutely does so I want to I want to take um because Guy Guy has a couple good questions over on the the mobile mm -hmm. game. Okay, first of all, it says games are only longer these days because they pack up with bullshit battle passes and time consuming mechanics, and that is very true. There are a lot of games that do that and bloat, and like the the newer Assassin's Creeds have done that a lot. Not the last one with Mirage because that one was like them stripping it down and trying to go back to old school, but. Like uh, Valhalla, that's what I've heard. It's just, it's just so bloated. Uh, Gene Park, who does great video games coverage, he said, like, if you're going to play Valhalla, you need to treat it like it's a single player live service and just like log in, do like an hour and then like log out and then come back and play it over like, you know, a year, year and a half. And it's a great game. Right. He's like, if you try and sit there and brute force your way through like 120 hours of shit, you know, because like. That's basically like, the, I think the campaign alone in that game is like 70 hours. It's like 60, yeah, it's and clocked like, in at 60, 70 hours or something like that. So. Yeah, and it, that's the time I spent like doing a ton of shit in Final Fantasy 16, like doing all the side missions and all the hunts and like everything, right? I don't want my campaign to take that long. Like, unless it's like Baldur's Gate. Like, Baldur's Gate, I can get lost, you know, in that world because it's such just a world, you know, and your choices matter so much. And then Guy also says, what do you mean by smaller game? Campaign size or indie games? I think generally we talk about, I like both, right? Because Astro's it, it like a smaller be, campaign. It could be anything. So Astrobot, if for those of you who don't know, was made by a group of developers who used to be the X uh, team of Japan Studios, which everyone threw a fit over. Um, unfortunately, a lot of their games didn't sell particularly well uh, years and years ago, but a good chunk of that team stayed and made the current team that made Astrobot. They're a team of 60 people, and it took them three years to make this game, and it has done 
absolutely amazing. Not only are reviews top marks, but it is actually sold out in a lot of retailers around the world. It is, it's been sold out here, not only in stores in Japan, but also on Japan Amazon. It's been sold out on US Amazon. It's been sold out on uh, Amazon in different European countries. It's been sold out in other stores that I've been seeing people post about. It is selling, right? And so the the quality of the game, and this it's a simple term, quality over quantity. When a game has good quality, people are gonna buy it regardless. One game I actually, I wish, this was actually talked about earlier on in our stream when I was playing Astrobot. But one game, or there was a question that was saying, what is a game I wish more people uh, would know about or you know try out or anything? And I think the end of it said like, even if it's a much older game, it's not a much older game, but I've talked about this since the beginning of the year here in 2024, and it's Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. And it is an amazing game, absolutely amazing. But a lot of people don't give it a any kind of chance because it has Ubisoft's name behind it, right? And I get it, Ubisoft has burned us all, like it would, depending on whatever game you've gotten from them at one point or another. But again, this comes down to doing your own research and everything because for I've had people come into our videos that we've made on the game. I did a bunch of boss guides on it and everything. And people came in and said, you know what? I didn't want to play this game because it's Ubisoft, but I gave it a shot. And oh my gosh, I cannot put this down. It is um, it has amazing combat. It's a Metrovania, cool art style and everything. Amazing little like unique abilities and everything that you can do with all the platforming. Lots of challenge areas. It is 100% worth it. And it's only 50 bucks. You can probably find it on sale now for like 20, if that. And it's even getting some story and other side quest DLC. A majority of that is free. Some of it is paid, but it's like five, like the new story DLC is like five bucks, which is awesome. So again, this always comes down to don't just don't just blindly believe people online. And, you know, and all of us fall into that to some degree, whether we were kids, young adults, adults. Now we've all fallen into it at one time or another. That's why it's so important to do your own research and everything. But seriously, Prince of Persia, Lost Crown, buy it. It's an amazing game. Absolutely amazing. You'll get tons of hours. It took me 30 hours to beat the story. I definitely did a lot of the exploring the area, so I could easily cut that down probably to 18 or 20 hours. And then there's so much more after that. But yeah, and then Kai Guy says on YouTube, Assassin's Creed Valhalla sounds like something the CIA would use as torture. Force them to play Valhalla for 12 hours a day for two weeks. Yeah. Uh that's I, I, a lot of yeah valha was definitely a, a polarizing game to a lot of uh reviews and people like one, i'd see one that was absolutely positive on it and the next thing was like the heck is this bloated open world game essentially uh, but one final comment i do want to mention here is uh i feel like making games more expensive is a slippery slope wasn't there a rockstar dev who said with the amount of effort they put into the game it should be 500 dollars or something like that i briefly remember seeing that i think that was headline. like the ceo or yeah, something. I think it was like he's the CEO of Take Two or something like that, which he's always had some wild takes to say the least. Um, and and he's a CEO. He's got yeah, he, yeah he's got to appease the shareholders and everything. Which again, typical business stuff. But I think the thing with prices increasing is that I don't think people have realized that we have hit the graph. At least in my opinion, we've hit the graphical limit. I think with how like graphically cool a game can look and everything like that. Now. Yeah. Obviously, graphics are not just simply make more polygons on screen and everything like that. It comes down to art, how fluid it looks, character designs, the whole night, you know, all, all that stuff comes together to make a beautiful looking game. Well, uh, and then can you make the game perform with and then all perform that? perform well, happening? right? One of the big things that I saw when it came to Astrobot's reviews and everything was even Digital Foundry, which as you guys know, Digital Foundry will take all that nerd talk that a lot of people don't like hearing and they break it all down for games coming out and everything, you know, whether it is basic things like ray tracing and polygons to you know how in depth the uh you know the all the all the stuff is i can't even think about it that's the thing right um and so in terms of graphical performance and everything but then they came out with astrobot astrobot runs 4k 60 with no hiccups whatsoever with all of the physics and motion all that stuff on there yeah and it's and just it like 
it looks yeah. great because the art style is carrying. And yeah, and the art style is there to carry and everything like that. It's not trying to be some UE5, you know, realistic looking game or something like that, right? Which is, which, which, you know, I said that about Elden Ring too. Like Elden Ring, if you look at Elden Ring graphically, mm -hmm. Elden Ring graphically looks old as shit. Right, but like, the it art looks like a carries the game, art, but the art it. style carries it, and it's one of the best looking games that's ever been made because of the art style. Exactly. Right, and yeah, it, it, guy, guys, as we peeked at Bloodborne in designs, yes, like, like we don't need to, like don't get me wrong, like the Horizon, Forbidden West, fantastic. Alan Wake Two, I would say, is the one game where I'd say it looks that good, and it, the game needs to look that good because you need to see those characters faces in the situation and stuff and they even carry a lot of it with F fmvs right which like nobody does that anymore but they did that so they could save money and instead of having to animate and do all the little facial tics and stuff they just film people and put it in there yeah and i think you know, another thing another thing when it comes to when we moved from the ps4 and the xbox one into the current gen right now or heck even going from ps3 to xbox 360 to the last gen consoles is that jumping from 1080 to 4K and then trying to do all this stuff with like ray tracing and you have engines like UE5, which just tax the heck out of the, the components of PCs and consoles and everything. That causes a lot of issues and you have one of two options. You either take extra years to really smooth it out, which then just adds on prices and everything, or you release it in a buggy mess, essentially. So, yep. and, and a lot, and, I, and some of that obviously does come down to them not being able to foresee that, you know, going from UE4 to UE5 was not as smooth as they hoped it would be. Yes, it, UE5 looks better, and a lot of that stuff does transfer over, but one game I've come back to a lot is uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. They're still on UE4, but they have made so many custom, you know, parts of that engine for their game explicitly. And if they try to, and there's a, someone asked them in an interview here in Japan where they said, should you, are you going to go to UE5? And all the videos for the most part that I've watched and a lot of the comments, not all of them, but a lot of them have said, no, do not go to UE5 because there it's not guaranteed that all of your custom made stuff from UE4 is going to go to UE5 perfectly. You know, a lot of people are saying, oh, go to UE5 after you've completed the trilogy as a one big game, essentially, right? Which is fine, because that will take a few extra years to really, you know, hammer out the details. And I'm not saying UE4 is perfect by any means. It's not. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has a lot of, you know, lighting issues and everything, which I completely get. But it's not, it's just simply the, the jump that we've had over the last few years, especially, it's not easy to develop this stuff. And that's going to take time, which means it takes more money. And by the time something comes out, that's just the way it is. I'm not saying it's for every game. I'm not saying it's for every game. But that's why a lot of these things take longer and everything. Like that. So it's not, it's not as cut and dry as some people make it out to be, is what I would say. Astrobot is a game that shows that we need to ditch the old gen console development focus only on this gen up. I agree. Like all the physics. I 100, the I 100 percent agree with that. But the problem is, is that when we look at it from the business side of things, which I hate bringing up, but it's it's a reality we live in. It's a, it's a reality. Yep. Yeah, it's a reality. Is the reason they haven't dumped the last gen consoles, unlike all the other years beforehand, is because so many people are still a on the previous gen, and it's not that they're there. That's not the problem. It's that they're buying microtransactions and all of that stuff for games like Fortnite and Call of Duty, which are still on the previous gen consoles. And there is no way they're going to leave that money on the table. They would literally be throwing money into the fire if they don't put the stuff there and everything like that. Now, if because if I remember correctly, there was a it was a business like update from Sony when they were doing the whole like new CEO and the COO was was a big numbers guy here in Japan was coming to be like, now we still got like 45% of players over on PlayStation 4 buying all these microtransactions for all these games and everything like that. There's no way they're going to throw out all those players for that money. Now, if it had said something like, you know, oh, there's only 20% of people on, you know, PlayStation 4 or something like that. Yeah, they would have dumped it long ago, probably. Right. But that's not the case. Half of that, all that sweet revenue and money that they're getting is on the previous gen and they're not going to ditch that. So as much as, as much as we would love for it to get dumped finally, I've been saying it for years now. I'm like, 
get rid of the freaking PS4 stuff. Stop it. Which, to be fair, end of 2023, coming into 2024, aside from your Call of Duties and your sports games and everything, a lot of things are going current gen right now. Only. They are. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it, the biggest thing, though, is, is Fortnite is still last yep, gen. Because too, everyone thinks they can just make the next Fortnite, and that's just how it's going to go. Well, as, as Guy Guy in comments says, it all boils down to capitalism, baby. Yep. Pretty much. So, I mean, and you've been saying for a while, Bobby, you think that GTA 6 is going to push the next gen consoles, essentially, because it's only yeah. on uh, Series X yeah. and PS5. I yeah, am curious how they're going to handle the S version. I'm wondering about that. Well, well, we'll see whether or not it drops the same day or not. That's well, up to Microsoft. Oh, micro- I, like. oh, I mean, if they didn't let Boulder, they let Boulder's Gate 3 go slip through a little bit. I wouldn't be surprised if they <laughs> let them do the whole S. Although that rumor, though, it's a big rumor. And there's no big confirmation or anything. But the rumor is that it's not coming out until 2026. And, and if that's the case, then Xbox might be the best way to play it because if they release it after the supposed 2026 Xbox console that's in development now, from what we're hearing, then the Xbox could have a huge win there that would yep. actually yep. be good timing. Yep. So while for them while for the, the first time, it's, 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 always, it's always funny looking at these rumors though, because there's the rumor of the new Xbox console that would probably be releasing around 2026, give or take. Then there's the rumor about PlayStation 5 getting the marketing deal with uh, GTA 6. And then there's the rumor of the PlayStation 5 Pro, and it's like, okay, so hang on. So this, it's going to be a new Xbox console, quote unquote, versus the PS5 Pro. But everyone's questioning who's the PlayStation 5 Pro for. But then you look back at like the Xbox One X and the PlayStation 4 Pro, where if you actually look at the sales of those, they weren't really that high, actually. So it's, it's really, it's just at that particular point it's interesting to look at all this stuff right so but and hydros i i I know you're talking about like astrobot and your single player and your big your big games essentially and like i said i think especially this year most of them are going to uh current gen only right now i could be wrong on that there's probably there's obviously still some i mean we saw that too last year with spider-man spider-man was not a ps4 game yep you know spider-man 2 excuse me and like i think sony's finally like xbox said it a while ago hey we're not doing any more for the the one uh third party is xbox themselves aren't and i think playstation has just quietly done that because i don't think since ragnarok they've released anything that's cross-gen and that was about two years ago yeah that was about two years ragnarok was the last cross-gen ps4 ps5 game and then after that to say yeah, it's, it's the third parties that are yep it's most it's mostly third parties which again i get it it's all you know business it, it makes sense but yeah it, ma- it, it makes sense for sony and for microsoft to go like mm, you should buy our new consoles to get our games and that i uh, you know that is what it is but yeah we are going to see a huge shift um to to next quote unquote next gen current gen now uh with gta 6 there's no question about that because there's so many people who are still playing gta 5 on their ps4 and when you go hey you can get gta 6 on only on a ps5 or xbox series they're gonna buy it without popular it is yeah yeah it's just 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 how it's gonna go rockstar is one of very few developers who has that kind of power and we just saw ea do it with the college football right yeah i was shocking i'm surprised ea they, they put that on uh current gen only i was actually shocked about that yeah well i mean they i mean they have to some at some point start doing that you know uh because either way it goes like those those playstation 4s are going to start dying pretty soon you know same thing with the the xbox uh, ones you know they they, those things don't last forever no they don't and that's that's, they're not built like the old consoles you know no well and that's the thing right they'll eventually die um and you're gonna have to replace them and how do you replace them you have to go up to the next console essentially I think the thing yep. that unfortunately has also hurt it a little bit, though, is that instead of seeing prices, we've talked about this beforehand, instead of seeing prices go down, we've seen prices go up, you know, worldwide. Call it inflation, call it corporation greed, which it's a, it's a mix of everything, essentially. Yep. That, that, that feels different, right? Especially if you're someone who's only been gaming for like the last 15 years or so, you know, we, we would see prices go down. I mean, like the GameCube and the PS2, into the 360 and the ps3 xbox one ps4 all yeah. those eventually went down in price over time and that was a stepping stone for people to jump in, finally jump into the current platform and everything i still recommend people buying their games because if you rely solely on subscription services and this is true within movies and music and everything 
the moment those are taken offline or the game, for example, is removed off of that subscription service, you don't have access to it anymore. It's gone. Yep. So you've got to buy yep. it. But and you paid all that money for nothing. Yeah, and you basically did all that. Like, you know, obviously, we don't know when it would happen, but Fortnite, to my knowledge, is not a physical game. Those servers eventually will go offline. When it happens, who knows? Right? Yep. Same with thing with mobile games or any kind of live service game. I mean, heck, we see with Call of Duty every couple of years, X servers go offline and people complain about it. That's the reality of those particular types of games and everything. That's, but if you at least buy the game, whether it's day one, later on in sale, if things like that before things get too crazy, you at least have it to play the game. Unfortunately, with multiplayer games, a lot of it does come down to the servers, but it, maybe you at least have the single player still. But, you know, that's just, you know, food, food for thought. 